Okay, so the next question comes to us from Isaiah, who asks, how do thunderstorms work? Which is a really great question and deserves the right background. Wait. There, that's the one. What do you think? Nice and stormy. Great question, Isaiah. How do thunderstorms work? Now, I don't know if you mean what makes the clouds, what makes the rain, or what makes the thunder and lightning, so I'm going to answer all of it. That's right. Top to bottom thunderstorm uh, explanation. So, first of all, you probably know that clouds are a bunch of water vapor, right? So how do they get up there? Well, the sun heats the surface of the earth and evaporates the water, turns it from really big droplets into tiny, tiny little droplets that get mixed up with the air, and hot air is less dense than cold air. So just like the egg that goes up in the cup, the hot air has less mass in the same amount of volume. Why? Because when something gets heated, the molecules move around a lot more, which means you need a lot more space to move the molecules around, which means there's going to be a lot less of them in any amount of volume, which makes it less dense, which means it will rise. Now, because air and water are both fluids, we can demonstrate what that looks like using this tub of water. So say that this is the atmosphere, all the air in our atmosphere right here, and this is cold water, by the way, and this hot water with blue food coloring in it is the heated air by the sun and the water vapor. So I'm going to take the lid off here and we'll see what happens. And you can see it goes up. Here, let's go to camera two so you can really see a good look at that. It's going up because the hot air is less dense than the cold air below. So it goes up and then it starts forming a cloud above. Now what happens, let's go back to camera one here, what happens then is it goes to the top of the atmosphere, and I know what you're saying, you're saying, Phil, it doesn't go to the top of the atmosphere, that's space. But check it, let's check this out, we'll go to camera three, and I will bring up this. Nope, that's a banana. Wait, this, there. See that picture of a thunderstorm cloud? Now that cloud has a very flat top to it, that's where all the heavy rain is, is pooling. And that's because it rises to a certain point in the atmosphere where it's just dense enough, but not so dense that it will fall down. So they'll often get a very flat part because the air below it, there's a certain threshold that'll sit at. And then the less dense parts of the cloud go up even higher that makes that thundercloud shape that we're used to. Now that shape is actually called a banana. It is called a Cumulo nimbus. I keep hitting the banana button. It's called the cumulo nimbus, which, interesting fact, in Latin, cumulo means stacked and nimbus means rain shower. So cumulo nimbus literally means uh, a heap of rain is coming, a, a whole stack of rain. Um, so a cumulo nimbus cloud is what is uh, we think of as a thunderstorm cloud. And what happens then is what makes the rain is the molecules of water start to come together and they start to form larger and larger drops. Now, if you've ever seen, wait, if you've ever seen a glass of water, a cold glass of water on a warm day, on the outside of the glass, you'll notice little drops of water form. That's called condensation. And if you look closely, little tiny drops of water will start coming together and joining other drops of water until eventually that drop gets big enough that it slides down the glass. That's exactly what happens when rain happens. Little bits of water come together and they get bigger and bigger and bigger until they form a full raindrop that's heavy enough to fall out of the cloud and come back down to the ground. And that is how rain happens, how thunderstorms get made with the water going up forming a cloud, and then condensing, and falling back down as rain. And now, we'll talk about the thunder and lightning, but I need another minute to clean up here. I don't have enough time in the transition, so first I'm gonna put this down, careful. Whoa, oh, okay, there, putting that down, and then, and then, I think I have enough time in the transition. Ready, go! Okay, we've covered what causes the clouds to form and what causes rain. Now let's talk about thunder and lightning. Here is our fluffy cloud. Let's go, let's go to camera two here. 
Here you go. Here's our fluffy cloud. And what happens is all the particles moving around, they start to get positive and negative charges. You see positive and negative just like on magnets, like these are. You get a positive and a negative. Now, what happens is the lighter particles start moving up and the lighter particles are positively charged and the heavier particles get a negative charge and because they're heavier, they start moving down. So they start being all separated because of density, right? The lighter stuff goes up and the heavier stuff goes down. Normally, a positive and negative would be attracted to each other like they are with magnets, but the storm keeps everything separated. And so when you have a whole lot of positive and a whole lot of negative separated in a cloud like this, eventually the electricity needs to jump between them. So you get a, wait for it, a lightning bolt. <laughs> wait, wait, move that to the right spot. Lightning bolt! Ah! <laughs> Ooh, that's fun. Sorry, I could do that all, all day. And that is what causes lightning in the cloud. Also, what can happen is when there's a big negative charge down here, that can jump to the ground. Ready? We're gonna do this again. Lightning bolt! Whoa! Let's go to camera one and do the other lightning bolt. Okay, ready? Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Whoa, I could do, I could do that all day. That's really fun. So that is why there is lightning in the cloud and lightning that goes to the ground is because there's positive and negative charges that get separated into the cloud by density, not banana, density. So there you go. Now, what causes the thunder sound? Well, the thunder is just the lightning bolt. And I know what you're asking me, you're asking me why don't they happen at the same time? Well, because the sound the lightning bolt makes and the light flash that you see, they move at different speeds. The sound moves, well, at, at the speed of sound and the light moves at the speed of light. That's not, I know that's not really very helpful to say, but just know that sound, though it's really fast, is way slower than the speed of light. So it's a, if it's far away, you'll see the flash, but it takes a while for the sound to get to you, which is why thunder and lightning don't seem like they happen at the same time because clouds, even though they're big, are actually quite, quite far away from you. So there you go. That's the sound of thunder, the, the flash of a lightning bolt, and how a cloud is formed, and how rain will fall. If you have a really awesome science question to ask me, well, please do. Just click the link below and that will take you to the awesome science question hub. What is it? It's probably just Facebook, but you know, you never know. It could be like, you know, in the future I could create some, you know, really elaborate website, but yeah, it's probably just Facebook for the time being. Ask me some cool questions, hit like and subscribe. And in the meantime, stay curious.